Hello everybody! Welcome to a late Sunday fun day! Because Megan didn't want to really go see us and my brother was kind of... But yeah, uh, finally here to talk about the birth of the dragon. I did realize there was actually two memes that came out this weekend. But as far as I could tell, near me, the movie, I think it's called Leap or Ballerina. It's going by a thousand different names. Pretty much the ballerina film that's CGI because it has no reason to be CGI. It just happens to be. It's It came out this weekend, but I didn't have any showtimes for it. The only new movie I had showtimes for this weekend was The Birth of the Dragon, which I was not particularly looking forward to. Originally, there was supposed to be Polaroid, which actually I'm kind of looking forward to, even though it's like, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a generic kind of horror film, but the premise sounded interesting enough, and on top of that, it was a rated R horror film, and I'm like, ooh, that might be interesting. And so, you know, I was intrigued, but of course, I decided not to come out this weekend. Magic jump cut! Sorry, uh, I don't know if y'all heard that the whole time, but it was bothering me. I couldn't even concentrate on y'all. Oh, my fan is just sitting there going off like mad. I'm like, oh my god, that's so insane. It's a ceiling fan. That's why I usually keep it on. Usually it's quiet. This time it decides it needs to make all the noise in the world. So I'll check up on that and see how it's doing. So sorry if y'all got a weird noise, but thankfully I paid attention to it quickly enough. I'm like, this is driving me bonkers! Yeah, uh, Birth of the Dragon is a film that came out and nobody else really cared about. Neither did they care about Leap. Because the number one movie was the movie I suggested last week, which was Hitman's Bodyguard. Even then, it just made a little bit of money. But I still say, it's like, hey, go see Hitman's Bodyguard. It's still a fantastic film. So, what do I think about The Birth of the Dragon? It's, it's terrible. It's one of the poor movies that have come out this entire year, and that's really not to say much because there's not been a whole lot of really, really bad films. There's only been a few, but still, it's really, really shitty. <laughs> to put it all in perspective, this is supposed to be a true story. I'm going to put a lot of heavy quotations on that. About the fight between a Shaolin Kung Fu monk... Pretty much he's a master of Kung Fu from similar, pretty much group that helped to teach Bruce Lee's dad who taught Bruce Lee Kung Fu and now Bruce Lee teaches Kung Fu in America. Whoopie doo. But he supposedly got into a fight with Bruce Lee trying to prove who was better or something else. If you actually follow the plot of the trailer, it makes it seem like this guy is hardcore like uh kung fu should only be for the chinese you know it's pretty much technically racist <laughs> it's like oh it's only for my nationality not for yours i don't care simply because it should only be for us because you poor human you poor americans will never understand this <laughs> thanks elitist asshole but in reality it's a lot more than that in terms of why he doesn't but the reason still is not very good I will give him that much they at least didn't go with the stupid reason of err I don't want the white people to learn even though clearly you see during Bruce Lee's class that he does have like a few black guys a few Hispanic guys stuff like that it's like okay he teaches more than just white people why keep saying white people it's so ignorant of everything and considering the current society we are in and with all our social justice warriors, you know, and all of that. Dear God, does it feel very, very fucking narrow-minded. But really the failing of this film, it's quite obvious way it is. This is supposed to be based on a true story about a fight that happens. And it's not interesting. It's, it's boring to sit through. The main character's film, first off, you would think, oh, it's Bruce Lee. It's totally Bruce Lee. Such as, like, with The Last Dragon. One of my favorite 80s films, which is such a great homage to 70s and and even, like, early 80s, like, black exploitation and kung fu films that it's just glorious. Especially with Show Nuff, which is just the best evil ultra bad guy ever, and he's the best final boss ever. For any game. 
And he knows in a movie, he's a video game character. I don't care what anybody says. But that felt like a very genuine love letter to Bruce Lee. Hell, the main character's called Bruce Lee Roy, but... Hell, even the really exploitative Game of Death film that used some of footage from Bruce Lee's actual funeral felt like a more genuine love letter to Bruce Lee than this ever does. This film makes Bruce Lee, first off, seem like a prick. Like, he's just an absolute asshole. Not even a slightly likable one. And I get Bruce Lee was a bit of an arrogant guy. That's not even up for debate. Everybody agrees to this. But it's to the point to where you he's really punchable. Like, you're sitting there the whole time, you're like, mm, I'd like to punch you in the face. I don't care if you kick my ass afterwards. Really want to punch you in the face. And it doesn't help that it keeps with Bruce Lee being that way. But he has such little screen time that he can't redeem himself. He's constantly stuck in this wallowing pit of I'm just this pure contemptible asshole the entire film. It pretty much just starts off with the main antagonist in a way. It's, it purposely makes it kind of vague is the best way to put it. I want to say his name is Jackman or Jackman. Something that they kind of pronounce a little weird. But pretty much he's the Shaolin Monk Kung Fu guy who fights Bruce Lee. I will give the actor this much. He does what he can with what he's given. It's not a ton. He's not bad. He does some decent flippy flues. You know, he tries to sell his Kung Fu or his martial arts that he does and everything. But he's just kind of not given a lot to work with. He's Okay, he's completely passable. In a better film, a better martial arts film, he would at best be the lowest point, but even then he wouldn't be a bad point. So, alright, we get past him. Then we get introduced to this main guy, his name is Steve. And turns out he's the main character of the film. There's your first failing there. How do you make a Bruce Lee true story based on this one event... And Bruce Lee's not the main character. Like, truly, the Bruce Lee, the guy who's playing Bruce Lee in this, he makes up about 15, 20 minutes of the movie's runtime. Most of his run is dude Steve, and his, where he just randomly falls in love with this one lady who is not really in part of Sex Slave, but it's like starting to put her in sex slavery. And even then, it keeps talking and dancing around the words. It feels. It feels neutered. It feels like this is nowhere near close to PG, even a PG movie. Like this feels like a, it's a G. It's all, it's for all audiences. Eh, why? Why is this a thing? I think technically it's rated PG-13 because I say ass a few times, but it's weird how they'll dance around words, and it's just in the, like. Constantly threatening, threatening to sell or give this girl to sex slavery. See? But even then, it's like, I don't care. I mean, she's pretty, but I mean, Iron Man, I don't know anything about her personality. Like, she's just, she's a pretty Asian woman. But what am I going to do with this? There's nothing I can do with this. This is not a character. This is just... This is what people hate princess movies supposedly for. They hate when they are just a prize to be won. And that's all this lady is. She is simply a prize to be won and be lifted aloft as his new thing he won. Instead of, and only that, but Steve has all the charisma of a wet piece of paper. I described it to Megan because uh, me and her were talking before this about this film, because she was kind of curious, like, if it was as bad as I was originally dreading, and it was, it was worse, I think. Oh, I described him as a piece of toast covered in mayonnaise. A white bread piece of toast covered in mayonnaise. And that is the best way to describe him. The man can't really act. I don't believe a single thing he says. He's not Tommy Wiseau version of, you know, just 
never finds the correct emotions for any of the inflections he's supposed to be using. But it's all so forgettable. It's Ben Kingsley from Blood Rain. Just how Ben Kingsley just read his lines. He didn't really care. He never really said much. Just kind of, this is a thing I am saying. It's that, but without the charm of it being Ben Kingsley, it's just this schmuck who's also in other stuff. I mean, it's kind of almost magical how little shits are given throughout this. Ugh. But then, like I said, he's the main character throughout this film, but we do have Bruce Lee, the guy who tries to pretend to be Bruce Lee. And wow, it's, it feels very, very much like it seems in the trailers. It feels like they dug up Bruce Lee's corpse, proceeded to fuck the ever-living shit out of it, took a dump on its face, then buried it and lit it on fire. This, I don't know what the hell this guy is going for. Everything he says, it's hard. It's like a Bruce Lee impersonation you would hear on Saturday Night Live. It's so weird and it's jarring every time because it's like, oh my God, why is this guy talking like this? I mean, it sounds like a fake accent. It feels exactly like you would think somebody would make fun of somebody to say it like that. Like how I said that is exactly how this guy delivers all his lines. And because of that, Bruce Lee has one emotion. Prick. Because it constantly sounds like this guy who's overconfident in everything he does. Ha. Huh? It's so awful. And it's... You're just sitting there holding on like, I, I really want him to shut up. I just... I want him to stop talking. Please. Please stop talking. Ugh. Ugh. Ah. And I know this is supposed to be an homage, but it's not an homage because it feels exploitive. And it's sad to say that since it's been over 40 years since Bruce Lee's been dead. But it still feels like they're trying to exploit the death of this man and in ways that doesn't even make any kind of sense. And on top of it all, there is one point where I'm like, Oh, here's where we're trying to pretend that there's a, that Bruce Lee's actually in this movie. Near the end, finally, after the fight that's already happened, the between the Shaolin monk, I'm sorry, I can't remember saying. I want to say it's like Jack Mann or something like that. I can't remember. I would look it up, but I don't want to be that rude myself. I don't fucking care. But between him and Bruce Lee, which I'll go ahead and let you all know, the fight's not really good. There's a lot of philosophical shit, and it's everything you've seen before in a martial arts film. It feels so derivative and so pointless. It's like I've got more from Sidekicks than this. And Sidekicks was kind of a mess, to put it lightly. At least Sidekicks was absolutely bonkers most of the time. Mm. But, at the end, finally... Uh, Jack Off guy and Bruce, who's asshole, decide to team up and take down this Chinese gang in a way. Pretty much it's sort of supposed to be like the triads, but they're not really the triads. And, oh, wow, it's actually good. It's actually some decent action. But boy, is it the whole, like, oh, true story. Mm -hmm. Nope. I'm pretty sure it didn't happen. Not this way. I don't care how badass Bruce Lee is. I doubt he just decided he's going to go beat the shit out of these bunch of gangsters. And even then, it's a subplot that's been going on dealing with Steve. Though you realize it's not truly the subplot because it's supposed to be the real plot. supposed to be Jack Off and Bruce Asshole fighting each other. But no, that's barely a plot point in this entire film, which is what it's based on, which is baffling still. No, we gotta worry about Steve wanting to get this, when to get this one lady because she has a vagina. I, I don't get it. Why is this the film? Why is this what we're focusing on? 
why can't we focus on the Bruce Lee guy? Sure, his accent's terrible, and it feels like he's making fun of Bruce Lee. It's something, at least. It's not Steve the Bland who's just signed to walk through and ran like, you, you're a hot girl. I need you to date me. I, there's no reason I should be in love with you. There's no reason you should be in love with me, because I have the personality of wet paper. But we should be in love and have 18 babies. The fuck? Why? Why is this a thing? And that's just the whole time I was thinking this movie, I was like, why does this exist? And that's the thing, I cannot even tell you why it exists. At least with Emoji Movie, I get it. Emoji Movie's a pile of shit. I will for, freely, fully admit that. But I get why it exists, because we're trying to ride a coattail, you know, we're trying to ride a trend. But this doesn't have a reason to exist. It solely exists to try and exploit more of Bruce Lee's death, or try and be a martial arts film, but it fails in both of those. I mean, it's exploitive, but not in a good way. At least Game of Death, when it's exploitation of it, at least still gave us the really good, awesome martial arts from Bruce Lee, this doesn't give us but like one decent fight. And even then, I would say that's the best I could say. It's very reminiscent of Big Boss in certain ways, but never does it reach the height of, oh yeah, this is totally, I feel like I'm watching a Bruce Lee film. Which is what it should have gave us. But instead, it gave us nothing. It gave you just a sense of, Ugh. I guess the most I felt throughout this entire film was a large amount of apathy at best. And that's not how you should make your movie. Your film should never attempt to try and be all about the apathy. It should be all about that bass or something. No, don't, don't be all about that bass. Fuck that song. <laughs> yeah, I've, this movie was really terrible. Like, I have described the plot for y'all. I wish I could sit there and say, oh, well, there's more to it. No, it's literally just Steve falls in love with this random Chinese lady. There is this other guy who kind of comes up for like half a second just to give Steve a reason to fall deeper in love with this Chinese lady. Yeah, exactly. And Bruce Lee wants to fight this other guy because of reasons and then the other guy eventually agrees. They don't nobody really wins, which I, that is true to how supposedly the actual fight happened. But different accounts from different people, so nobody knows. But even then, it's like, who cares? That, that's the ultimate thing. It's like, by the end of it, it's like, who cares? I don't care. None of the filmmakers of this film decided to care. The producers didn't care. The actors didn't care. So, why should we care? So, yeah, if you really want to know, hey, should I go see a film this week? Or should I see a film this week or deals with Bruce Lee now? You just have to spend money. Uh, this is going to sound weird and oddly like atypical. Uh, spend your money to give it to a good cause. Send it to some of the people that are down in Houston there that have lost their homes and everything. Donate it there. Donate your time or anything. Don't watch this. This is a mess of a film that in the worst of ways. It's derivative in none of the good ways that a good martial arts film should be derivative. It, as you can guess, it's a one. This doesn't reach a higher crescendo than that. It's one of the poor martial arts films I've seen in a while. And on top of that, it's a bad, bad wannabe Bruce Lee film that feels like all those exploitive Bruce Lee films that came out after his death with none of their charm. Which is something special to accomplish. So yeah, um, <laughs> fuck Birth of the Dragon. And, as you can see, I got my phone, but I'm not actually looking it up for review purposes. Because, like I said, I, none of these actors you're going to care about, none of them are going to you're gonna remember. Unless you watch a whole lot of uh, Chinese films, because there are actually quite a few Chinese and all that actors. So. But even then, eh, eh. I recognize, like, one guy because he was in Man Conqueror Alert 3. Whoopee. <laughs> I mean, it was cool to see. He he still gets work. He's like, ah, he still gets deed. That's good. So, 
this upcoming month of September is going to be a weird month. In fact, I'm going to let y'all know with the first weekend, I have no damn idea what we're going to go see. We being Megan, myself, maybe my brother will come along. Uh, maybe it'll be the next Goon movie, but I haven't even seen the first one. And even then, I don't think Goon's going to come out in theaters. Or Goon 2, nonsense. So... Next week might just be us going to see another movie that Megan's actually never seen. Because I do know that our theater is supposed to be doing a re-release of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. In fact, I learned when I got there that they actually did a re-release of Terminator 2. Which is like, well, I could have went so and saw this. I would have gladly went to <laughs> see that. But, yeah, that's... So next week's probably going to be just us talking about Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It's a, fantastic, it's a fantastically fun movie. It hasn't exactly aged very well. There's still some plot holes that are starting to pop up more and more. You look at the film. I still like Close Encounters. So I'll go watch it again. <laughs> Megan's never seen it, so hey. At least somebody's going to be awed and nude by it. <laughs> uh, the week after that, the 8th is going to be It. I mean, we're going to probably just go see It. Uh, maybe I might go see Home again. It's the Reese, Reese Witherspoon movie. I'm like, it looks uh, decently chuckle worthy here and there eh. uh the 15th will definitely be american assassin i've actually been looking forward to it since i first saw a trailer for me that looks like it's uh, gonna be a hell of a lot of fun and i got a lot of really good accountant vibes from it in a good way so i'm looking forward to it uh probably also that week i will go see mother the new darian arnofsky movie well, I'll see exactly how it works out because, like I said, our theater is weird and some things just don't appear there. We just don't get. Uh, the week after that will definitely be also two movies. The 22nd, I'm going to go see Kingsman the Gold Circle and the Lego Ninjago movie. Megan me might try to go see Lego Ninjago just ourselves because I know my brother really wants to see Kingsman. And Megan's kind of curious about it, but she wants to see a first one. So she might not be with the Kingsman review, but with the Lego review. We'll just see exactly how it ends up working. But definitely there will be two reviews, because I actually want to see both those movies. The more I see of Lego Ninjago, the more I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> Especially since the Lego Batman movie was just the funniest stupid thing I've ever seen in a while. Um, then just to end the month, it's definitely going to be American Made. I saw that even though Tom Cruise's accent is not the greatest thing in the world. It's still enough that I'm like, alright, you, you want me Tom Cruise? <laughs> if I can also, again, this is still dependent, I will go see Jeepers Creepers 3. As supposed to come out a few days before, or American Made, I might try and see if it will be doing like a later showing or something like that and sneak in and go see that. I don't know. Again, theater's weird. But definitely American Made will end up this year, and if I'm lucky, Jeepers Creepers 3 will also be in there. So yeah, like I said, this month is going to be weird. Like, near the end is where all the stuff is actually coming out. And the first weekend, this next weekend, I don't know what it is. It's like, it will be a movie. I don't know what that movie will be. It's going to be a thing. So yeah, uh, like I said, donate to a good cause if you would instead of go see this if you just absolutely like, i need to go see this i don't think people want to or if you just have have to see a movie this weekend go see hitman's bodyguard go see spider-man homecoming it's still in theaters uh, hell go see wonder woman it's still in theaters as well it, it, there are so many better films and so many more worthwhile films than this this going to see the birth of dragon is just going to be such a waste of your time like it's not even bad in a like almost interesting way like I, if i can say that much about uh, uh resident evil final chapter as terrible as it is it's at least bad in a very interesting kind of way this is just a plain shit sandwich with a little bit of you know diarrhea dipping sauce it's it's terrible <laughs> so Whatever's going to be next week. Like I said, probably going to be Close to the Third Kind. If not, I might also try and sneak in uh, Terminator 2 just so I can make. I'm going to 
than just sit there and flate this movie all night long. <laughs> I love Terminator 2, it's so fucking awesome. Yeah, uh, that's how next month's gonna be, and fuck Martha the Dragon, I don't care about this movie at all. So, until then, I will see y'all next week, so bye-bye, everybody.